And I also volunteer for a couple other organizations. Oh. Uh, but my main interest is promoting the 40 developmental assets. The 40 developmental assets have been around for about 25 years now. And now they've surveyed over 4 million kids in, in uh, Canada and the United States. And they sell their 40 experiences and qualities that kids need. And the more they have of these things, the better they do, and the less trouble they get into. It's very simple. For example, if you have a family dinner several times a week where people listen to each other and talk to each other, you're probably building uh, five, six, seven of these assets at the same time. The cornerstone of uh, the 40 developmental assets is positive relationships. Positive with uh, your family, positive with neighbors, positive with people in the community, positive with older kids. Uh, uh, they're role models too. So positive means you're looking, you're praising more than you're criticizing. You're listening, you're providing support. So positive communication, positive relationships is the cornerstone of this. People ask, when should you start working on the 40 assets? That's easy. Probably six months before you even get pregnant as a woman. The reason why is a lot of these assets depending on, on the parents modeling the kind of behavior they want their children to have. Honesty, integrity, this peaceful conflict resolution. All these things uh, take practice whether you're an adult or, or, or a child. So the sooner the better. Now you probably meant when should they start with their kids actively and that's when they're born. The most important indicator for success in school is vocabulary and kids start building that by having their parents read to them and talk to them so with newborns you should be reading to them every day 15 minutes a day reading anything you can read to them and that'll start building the vocabulary and that's that's the indicator for school that's for success in school you, you have to be a role model you have to be kind you have to give attention a lot of eye-to-eye -eye contact responding quickly when kids have needs, whether it's a dirty diaper or they're hungry, whatever the need is for newborns to respond. The other side of that is when, when do you not work on them? And there's no end to that. Uh, I think I could look at my life and I probably don't have all 40 of these in my life. Uh, I have a lot of them. I've, I've looked through. I was lucky as a child and I wound up with a lot by the time I was 18. But, but the others you still have to build. Uh, peaceful conflict resolution is something that you always have to work on because you still get angry. It doesn't mean that you don't get angry and upset about things that happen, but you don't express those things in physical ways. You don't need to hit, you don't need to shout, you don't have to say demeaning words to people, words that hurt. And that won't solve anything. You have to get, uh, look at your feelings, listen to them. Uh, part of uh, communication is always listening. People seem to forget it's mostly about talking and shouting. No, it's about listening to what the other person is saying as well. Yeah, the adult relationships are, are of several kinds. Of course, you expect the parents to really, really support the kids. And, but what happens when the kid needs to be disciplined? And I don't mean punished necessarily. Discipline does not mean being punished. Discipline means training. And there's different ways of doing it. But no one wants to be disciplined. No one wants to make mistakes. Kids don't like it any better than adults do. So, so when they do something wrong, it's good to have some place to go. Let's say if you have a, a two-parent family and, and uh, one parent is disciplining the child, speaking to them about something that went wrong, uh, that they didn't do well, that they knew they should have done, uh, the child is not listening in the way you'd like them to. So then the child can go to the other parent, or the other parent can go to the child and say, hey, I, got, I hear you got in trouble with the, your mom, or I hear you got in trouble with your dad. Uh, what happened? And so it can be a listening voice within the family. It's sometimes needed that that listening voice needs to be outside the family as well. If you're a single parent, who's that child going to go talk to? Who's going to come in and say those things about, oh, I hear you got in trouble? And kind of ask questions that would help the child understand what went wrong, what they could do the next time, which is the most important thing, at a point when they're listening and when they're thinking about it. Say, so, yeah, I probably should have done, shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have stopped and think about it a little bit more before. I did whatever. The people who spend a lot of time with their kids are teachers. You know, once they start going to school, they pro the teachers probably spend as much time with your children as, as you do. And, and so it's important to have good relationships with the teachers. Most teachers are exceptional. You might run into some that is not so exceptional occasionally, but they're pretty rare. So how do you get your child to feel safe at school? You have to have a relationship with the teacher yourself. Go to the open houses, go to the uh, back to school nights, 
get to know the teacher. Ask about how you can help the teacher. Find, uh, get feedback on a regular basis. Give them an email address, a phone. Say, call me if there's any problem. If you support the teacher and make it special, your child would be special with that teacher too and will have a really strong relationship. They need help. They're very, very busy. They're teaching 10 times more than they should because and they don't have time to, to focus as they should on every child. It just isn't time in the day. So if you have a relationship with that teacher and that teacher can call you when there's any kind of a problem, you can head it off before it's a big problem. The child would feel safe at school and and build a relationship with that teacher as well. And I think if you talk to talk to 100 adults, you'll find 50 of them had good relationship with some teacher along the way and made a difference in their life. One of the assets is that the youth feels valued by the community. Now, I think in our community, we have a very caring community. I think we probably would be near the top. But that's not what this asset is. It's not whether we are a com caring community. It's whether the kids feel that it's a caring community. And they don't feel that as much as we do as adults. Uh, and, and there's probably some reasons for that. But, and I think one or two, say, neighbors or one or two store owners or one or two adults they've run into have not been really caring. They, they might be suspicious of every child that comes in the store. Or, and and it's, that can make a bigger impression than the ones that treat them nicely sometimes. So we have to be careful about that. But we, we started a new program with the Grass Valley Police Department to try to try to boost this feeling of for the kids that the community cares for them. And it's called Positive Tickets. Uh, in this, the Grass Valley police officers will issue a positive ticket to a kid uh, they catch doing a good deed. Now, it looks a little bit like a real ticket, and the instant rewards are small, re small things, like an ice cream or uh, a sandwich or a drink. So that, but they can take that right away and go get whatever that reward was. The concept is really good. And, and the place that started this up in Canada, uh, in uh, <coughs> the... Uh, referrals to juvenile court and to referrals to uh, juvenile court were reduced by almost 50 percent. They actually closed a courthouse. I don't think we'll see that bigger difference here when we get this really rolling along because of the differences in our community. But that's a huge, huge change in, in an environment. So I'm Detective Zach LaFerriere and I work for the Grass Valley Police Department and I'm known as Officer Zach among kids and uh, we have implemented the positive tickets um, because officers are typically out uh, enforcing negative behavior and Ned Russell and some of his friends helped pioneer positive tickets and we've joined forces with him uh, in an effort to find people doing positive things and reinforce them by giving them a positive ticket instead of a negative ticket. And so it looks like this, and they're issued the, um, the details. The stub is taken off, put into a raffle, but this ticket here, uh, the child um, is allowed to keep. And it says, uh, positive ticket on it, and it says, congratulations, you've been caught doing something exceptional and uh, it gives them information in regards to how they can collect a prize. And their stub is put into a raffle and they can win lots of different prizes uh, ranging from free movies to even, I think, once uh, a good times gift certificate for $25. Um, lots of different things that kids are interested in. To name it for a few, we've got culture shock, um, daily donuts, uh, burgers, tacos, uh, 49er Fun Park, um, raffles, and so it's really nice because officers are out always interacting with kids. It's nice to give them a, a positive ticket. Um, initially, it was actually very difficult, and I remember one time I um, was in uniform, and I was looking for somebody doing something exceptional at the Thursday night market, and I just couldn't find anybody. Nobody seemed to be doing anything exceptional, so I decided to set up uh, a scenario to get somebody to do something good. So I took a, I went down to Del Oro, I asked for an empty cup and a, and a lid, and I took it and I set it on its side, on the sidewalk, right next to a trash can. It was like 12 inches away from a trash can. And I sat up uh, at the Union Square um, stairs, and I was just staring at the trash, or at the trash, 
uh, being the cup and the trash can. I was just waiting for somebody to come pick it up and put it in the trash. And then I would issue them a positive ticket because I really didn't have to bend down and pick up a piece of trash, put it, put it in the garbage. So I stared at it and I watched people walk around it. I watched people step over it. I even watched some people step on it and even kick it. And it took me quite a while uh, before finally, um, to my shock, somebody, uh, it was a young girl, she just, within one motion, bent down, picked it up, threw it in the trash. You know? And I couldn't believe what I just saw, so I ran down and I'm like, hey, and I'm in uniform. I'm like, hey, hang on a second, I know she's picking up the trash, you know, why'd you do that? And she looked at me like really strange, just like, because it was trash. And I'm like, I know, but like, why did you go out of your way to pick it up? You know, like the hundreds of people before you, you could have just stepped over it. And she was like, it just seemed like the right thing to do. And so those are the people that we were looking for. And so I issued her a positive ticket. Uh, and then it, within minutes later, I noticed that there was a, a young woman who was uh, trying to sell buttons to raise money to purchase a placard uh, for a gravestone. Uh, for her friend and her family just didn't have money so she was trying to raise money by selling buttons and so I thought that was a very noble thing to do and instead of spending their time socializing instead she's trying to raise money for a family and I thought that was that was really cool so she got a positive ticket as well and then there's another little boy that same night he did something really cool uh, but we usually write um, what the reason was on the ticket and then we publicly get to um, reinforce that good deed that they did during the raffle and so um, like I would take the mic and I would just um, have somebody pull one and then I would read the reason and we just do a couple of prizes each night and uh, I think it had a very positive impact and it was nice to be an officer and issue positive tickets instead of negative tickets um, so it's a, it's a great program and in addition to that program we also have several others the Great Summer Youth Academy is probably the highlight of the programs that the Grass Valley Police Department is involved in. And it is a four-week summer program for kids. Um, there's fourth through eighth graders, and fourth graders get five days of just action-packed fun. We do things from 49er Fun Park to swimming at Pioneer Pool. But the main thing is they're equipped with life skills. And the Great Summer Youth Academy is based off the curriculum from the Great, uh, the great Program, which is it's like a national program that uh, is taught uh, all over the nation and also even in different countries like uh, Canada um, and even overseas in uh, like England. And it's just a cool program that equips kids with life skills and these life skills are anywhere from anger management and how to control their anger to refusal skills. And the refusal skills are huge because everybody is different and so what may work great for someone else like no. Um, is really easy, but for other people it doesn't come that easy, especially if they're a trusted adult or a family member, or lots of others, like communication, active listening, um, and then decision making is huge. So lots of skills that if kids can learn and get a grasp of while they're young, they will definitely be um, a step up from other kids their age and have uh, skills that will help them become successful in life. And that's really um, our passion here is to help equip kids so that when they do find themselves in like in bad situations, they'll either know how to get out of them or they'll know how to make good decisions to not even put themselves in those bad spots. Which is why um, the school resource officer and myself go into the classrooms and teach either a six-week program for fourth graders or we go into the classroom um, for sixth graders and we teach a 13-week program. So as previously mentioned, um, some people in our community um, have really embraced the positive tickets and help um, give these free donations. So as an example, Jamba Juice um, donated just a free 16-size uh, smoothie, and then uh, Jack in the Box, two free tacos. And we have a lot of others like Blockbuster, a free movie rental, um, uh, Culture Shock, just free yogurt, cruise in, get a free donut at the Daily Donuts, and then even the Shell station threw in like a free 22 ounce fountain drink, um, which is really nice for a hot day. And I really like this one, I mean, most kids would like to pick this one, um, just good for a, a free um, popcorn, and then even occasionally we get a free movie tickets to um, Sierra Theaters. So I think it's really awesome that people in our community are some supplying positive tickets 
so that the kids can um, enjoy something and be rewarded for the good deeds that they've done. So it's a great, uh, it's a great program, and um, all the officers um, have the ability to issue positive tickets. Um, and I can't wait to see uh, where it's going to go from there. Uh, someone mentioned to me because I'd done a survey and. And they said this is a couple were redundant. And I thought, well, there's a caring neighborhood and there's bound, you know, neighborhood boundaries. But when you think about this, I think they are kind of redundant. Because what is a caring neighborhood that doesn't have boundaries? And I couldn't think of that. It means that someone brings cookies over once in a while. That's not really a caring neighborhood. You know, you have to have the boundaries to be caring. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, adult role models, you know, we talk about parents being a role model, that's obviously really important. The first five years is, is really, really important with kids, and that's the parents mostly. Uh, but other role models are almost equally important. And if you think about this, I don't want to discredit parents, because parents are obviously the most important thing with kids, but uh, if role models are totally different outside of the home than they are in the home, uh, your child's going to change. Uh, this is we talk about peer pressure with kids all the time. If your kids are hanging around with others that are bad role models, they're probably going to follow the that that path that you don't want them to go on. It's important that they have good role models. Uh, the same they have the same values you have. That their parents have the same value. Uh, if not, you're going to wind up being disappointed because you cannot overcome. Uh, the role models they see outside of the home, both in adults and with kids. Now the funny thing is is those adults and kids outside of the home can, can sometimes overdo what the parents have done. Uh, even though the parents are super important. If, if say a child grows up in a, in a home that's not so supportive, uh, the neighbors can make a big difference, the teachers can make a big difference, a bus driver can make the big difference. Uh, uh, Anyone can make a big difference because then you you know that other role model can say, huh, that's what the kid can say. Look at that and say, that's what I want to be. That's what I want to do. I like the way this person listens to me. They care about me. And you'll hear stories about how, how, say a teacher has turned around someone's life, but you can't see the parents turning around that life. You know, if, if the outside role models are all negative, so you, the parents have to pick good role models for the children. Creative activities. That's, that's actually one of my hot spots, too, when I talk about these assets. Uh, another, another thing that's come out of Search Institute is this concept of sparks. And what that is is a passion in life. And interestingly is over half the kids, both boys and girls, who say they found a passion, say they found it in the arts somewhere. Now, how do kids get a passion in the arts if they aren't exposed to it? Now, the arts are including uh, drawing, painting, modeling, writing, dancing, singing, playing music, you know, you name it. Everything within the art world uh, is a creativity, it, it, what we think of as creativity. That asset actually appears less frequently than any other in kids. It's the lowest, you know, I think it's something like uh, only 20% of the kids report having this asset in their life. And it's not that they aren't creative. The asset is worded for the older kids as they spend, uh, I think it's three hours a week at, a create, at either lessons or practice. It's less than that for younger kids. But if they're not exposed to these things, and schools are dropping things like creative uh, arts and crafts, how are they ever going to find their passion? And boys, sports is second. For girls, uh, uh, reading, I think, is second. One of the assets is uh, spending time in a religious institution every week. And when I'm given talks about this, this is the only one I had a complaint by someone. Uh, but this is survey data. And this is survey data on what's common in kids that do well. So I can't leave it out. It, ha it has to be there. This is what comes from the organization that did the surveys. Uh, and it turns out that's one of the things that's important in kids that do well. Now, when you think about all the other assets, I think it's easy to see why this is, is valuable. Uh, First of all, the assets that talk about uh, positive adult relationships. In most religious institutions, there's a, other adults that are forming relationships with the kids. They, they have a similar positive attitude towards kids, and they want to support kids. So you have this built-in adult support network. That's also important for the parents to have an adult support network, 
There's times when you need relief. You have two children, and one has to go to the hospital, and what are you going to do with the other one? That's where this religious institute is. So you've got support for yourself as well. Uh, they generally have the same values as you, as you do, so they're positive role models, uh, just like you would be. Uh, it also deals with peer role models. And there's, there's another biggie that if you wind to go, going from one community to another and you're in a, one of the relatively mainline, one of the larger organizations, uh, you have a ready support network when you move to that other community. Uh, I suppose there's some very, very small religious institutions that, that don't have that, but there can't be any, very many of those. Uh, so you go to another community, you've already got a place to go, friends, potential friends, ready-made. Uh, you know what they talk, you know how they feel, you're building that support network right away. Um, there is one final thing here, if people really still have a problem with this one, is of the whole 40 assets, uh, the importance is to have more of these in your life. And, and if you don't have one, that's not going to mean you're a failure in life. So there's even room to say, well, get the other 39, don't worry about that. But the thing is, I think anyone, anytime you have this built-in uh, organization where you know how, what everyone is thinking, you know what their values are, you know how they treat kids, you know what the, the program is, there's value for kids in that. And it's very difficult to see how that could hurt them in, a, in any way whatsoever. Uh, sparks early in their life. Now, what, why is this important? If you have passion in your life, you know what your passion is, everything else kind of comes together around it. You'll know why you're reading history. You know, you'll be interested in the history uh, of that, whatever that passion is. You'll be interested in seeing it. You'll be interested in doing it. You'll learn everything you can about it. And that will put a focus on your life. And that's why this is another concept. It's not really part of 40 assets. It's, it's a parallel thing that comes out. But you can see why it's so important. Kids will be focused in school because they'll see how this will apply to their passion. Uh, they might miss something and say, well, I don't think I need to know that. But they will. You can't write songs if you don't, can't do English and if you can't write. I should go over uh, the basic principles besides. I mentioned a couple of them, the underlying uh, concepts that are good for this. One being the positive relationships, that that's a very important thing. Another being uh, looking for what's positive in kids, not what's negative, so that you can praise. Uh, it's So, you know, you got the saying, the squeaky, re uh, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Well, that's true, but that doesn't work so well with kids. Uh, when they're doing something annoying, it's very easy to notice it <laughs> and to speak then. When they're behaving perfectly and you're tired and you've had a long day at work and you, you, you have other things you have to do, it's easy to ignore that. Uh, you, you want not to do that. You want to really notice when they do the right thing and say, hey, that's really great you're working on your homework. That's really great that you're, you cleaned up your room today and that there's no toys to trip over the living room. Uh, and, and close your eyes a bit to those things that you find annoying. They'll go away. Another thing is to look at kids that they all need more of these assets. That's an important concept. The average is less than 20 of these assets are in a child's life. That's too low. You really want to get up in the 30s, at least. The more, the better. But even if they're in the 30s, the more, the better. Uh, another one is, this is for everyone. Everyone has a role. The parents have a role. All adults have a role. But in, older kids have a role because they can have even more influence than, adult, than an adult can. The other, you know, kids will always look up to a, a, another kid who's two years older, three years older. You know, they're the heroes. If, they're, if they are showing the right attitudes, your kids will turn out fine. So this, this is for everyone. It's parents. It's older kids. It's neighbors. It's community members. It's everyone. How do, how do parents use this? Well, first of all, don't worry about 40 at one time. That, that's, that'll, that'll discourage you right off the bat. Once a year, you pull out this list and you do a kind of a checklist. How have we done? Do it on a birthday. As soon as your kids are old enough, have them go through it with you and have them say what they think they have. And you do what you think they have. And then you compare notes and talk about it. But what do you mean you, you don't feel connected to school? or? Uh, Tell me, what, what, why don't you feel connected? And you can work on little things like that. 
but it's not something that you could take and I think you have to recognize the value of this overall. It's not something that if you saw this and your child had 10 of these instead of 40 that you're going to panic uh, and, and try to change everything at once. That doesn't work. Uh, you, you just want to look and say, okay, well, what can we change here that's small, change in our life? Uh, maybe it's when your child wants to talk to you, you put down whatever you're doing and look at them and say, what's wrong? Talk to me. Don't be distracted with your cell phone or computer or TV or anything else. Very simple. Um, try to have a family meal one night a week. You've never done this and you've got three teenagers? Well, ask them if they'd stay home for an hour one night and plan a trip. Uh, plan a, a family thing to do together. Then let that maybe, maybe grow into something else. Um, start a family calendar where everyone writes uh, where they are and when they'll be back and how you can reach them, parents included. So there's little things you need to do to get started. Uh, but keeping those under those principles in mind, uh, treating the kids, let them participate in their discipline. I mentioned earlier that, that discipline is not the same as punishment. Uh, you'd be surprised what answers you get back if you say, well, you knew you weren't supposed to do this. And of course, it's not fair to discipline someone if you've, they've never been told what is right and wrong. You have to know what's expected first, clear expectations. And then you can say, well, you, you didn't know you weren't supposed to do this, right? And they will, they will be honest and say, yeah, I knew I wasn't supposed to. Well, what do you think we should do about this? What will help you? And see what they come up with. You'd be surprised. They'll probably be harder at themselves than, than you are. Say, well, they can participate. They, they will understand. Uh, and this gives them a sense of controlling what happens to them. And you're still teaching them. You don't have to hit them. You don't have to yell at them. Those things don't work. No one listens when you do that. Uh, they won't like being disciplined just the same. But if you let them participate, I think you'll see better results than if you don't do that. Uh, sometimes people have looked at the list and say, oh yeah, I know those. Yeah, because they're common sense things. They're not, they're not far out stuff like they have to have uh, uh, their own airplane. No. <laughs> uh, you want them to be honest. You want them to have integrity. You want them to feel good about themselves. You want them to be successful. Uh, you know, they're not complicated things. But you can start those, like say, a family meal, volunteering together, helping out the neighborhood together, uh, making sure they hang around with the right people, make sure you hang around with the right people, and things will just fall in place. And the more you do this, the easier being a parent gets to be. Uh, and we all enjoy good kids.